mage. So we're good to go. I sandboxed uh, Waterdeep, so they spent like three years there. <laughs> right. yeah, I really like uh, I liked that 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 arc, and also like the most recent uh, Descend into Avernus one they did. Yeah, I haven't I haven't looked into that one at all because I was thinking about playing it. Is everyone uh, all set up? I do believe so. Yeah. Okay. Then let's get started. Exandria, a world that is equal parts beautiful and fantastic, but also horrifying and tragic. A world that has seen conflict of every scale, that has been almost crushed by the ambitions of those who seek to make it their own. From benevolent gods and ancient, amb- uh, ancient abominations to the urchin living on the streets, Exandria is a focal point of endless hopes and dreams and, inevitably, failures. Wildmount. Should have put screen transitions on my script. A land that has long been plagued by war, where the scars and ruin of an ancient war between gods and mortals can still be seen. Jorhas bears the brunt of these scars, where strange creatures roam along aband- roam long abandoned lands, twisted by energies older than memory. This ruinous landscape is home to the Kryn Dynasty, a civilization of drow elves that has brought some semblance of unity to this fragmented place. West of the Jorhasian wastes lies the Ashkeeper Peaks, and beyond them, the Dwendalian Empire. Once ravaged by civil war, King Dwendal oversees a kingdoms whose factions often squabble, often squabble with each other as much as they were with the Kryn. Having suffered a significant invasion in recent weeks, even seeing their capital briefly sieged, there is, for the moment, a ceasefire, and many hold their breath while they await word from peace talks taking place somewhere out at sea. Southwest of the Empire, we arrive at the Menagerie Coast. <clears throat> a warm and tropical country, this land and its seas are ruled mostly by the Clovis Concord, though a large grouping of pirates known as the Revelry claim islands and stretches of the sea for themselves. It is here we come to Palma Flora, a small fishing village on the coast with a culture of shark hunting. In fact, colorful decorations can be seen and festive music heard celebrating a shark hunting festival. The... Uh, the smell of cooked fish wafts through the air. As here we come and we see a young woman sitting on the beach. Um, she is uh, has her feet in the water and she is just looking out across the coast. And uh, uh, Freya, if you will describe your character, please. Um, Freya is a little late teens, early twenties, uh, human female wears sort of what you see kind of um Julie lightweight armor and looks to be a local from from this part of the the coast uh, clearly of uh, descent of the the original people who, who settled here the the Marquesian um, the stuff all right oh she's five seven five nine that kind of tall, lanky. Gotcha. And Freya? It's Freya, right? Am I saying that right? F. Freya or Faria? Faria. Do your, uh, on, like, the other side of the, uh, point of the... It's called the Isthmus, or the bit of the island you're on. Um, you see two, what appear to be shark hunters, part of the local festival. Um, they are, uh... Both teenagers, one a female half-elf and a uh, male tiefling. Um, They appear just to be, like, messing with their spears, and um, they have a couple fish. Maybe uh, they might be making a fire soon, but they've just settled in the area. I just realized my name is almost the same as his. I, yes, that is true. I'm going to change that. (laughs) I mean, I can change mine, too. I have a secondary. I'm just waiting until... Oh, Corey, I don't think he's talking about you. I think he's talking oh. about Kalatar and Alatar. Yeah, like exactly the same. Oh, Remember, I showed you that earlier. 
I was just going to let you guys discover that for yourselves. If that's bothersome, obviously one of you can change your I'm name just, if you want. I'll but... change mine just to Duncan. Sure. Wow. No, I go by Cal, so don't worry about it. I go by Al. <laughs> Well, fuck! <laughs> they don't what find land alive. do you hail from? <laughs> call you Al? Is that what we do? We can call you Al? Just go with Duncan. I'll just go with that. So much easier. Well, Kalitar, please describe your character. But now we're going to find out that Court is called a, a Duncan. Might be Bruce with the D, but it's fine. I am Kalitar. I... Hail from another place, though fishing is common to me. I am a half orc, standing roughly <laughs> six three, two hundred and forty pounds of half orc. Although I don't come from here, these people can fuck off. All right. Um. And then you, Kalatar, see approaching from around the corner two people. Uh, Drus, if you want to introduce your character first. Very well. I am Drus, a paladin, also an ASMR. I stand roughly about 6'2", uh, and I do weigh about 200 pounds. Uh, the first thing you notice about me is my golden hair that seems to sparkle in the sun. Next, you see my shivering silver eyes that kind of sparkle when I smile. And that is Drews. Alright, and next to him is Duncan. So, I'm also very tall. I'm six foot six. Uh, light blonde hair, very skinny. Coming in at like 180. Almost emaciated, but not quite. Um, and I am a wizard. Long blue coat. Um, my owl familiar riding on my shoulder. I'm trying to remember, but I'm almost certain that that, that picture is one of the dwarves from the Hobbit cartoon. Um, no, it's from an old, it's from an old movie called, uh, Flight of Dragons. Oh, okay, that is also, same guy, by the way, same artist, but that is, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Flight of Dragons is also a great. Yeah, I was just like, about? what's the most obscure? The DM, me. I still got no picture for you. Oh, well, that's sad. It's a funny mm -hmm. green wizard. And very that's weird. I also don't have a, a picture for him. You guys are missing out. <laughs> Just hit him. You might want to reload, like relaunch the game. I don't know if that, but it doesn't matter. Obviously, you don't need to see it. Um. Sorry, Drews. What's your Discord name? Oh, Court. Okay, I got it. Yeah, hit F5 and it redoes it. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, someone... I think he was the one, and I was planning on going straight into his thing, and... He is not a... So... He was our cleric, uh, right? Yes, he was. <laughs> we don't... So, I mean, with how I did the healing rules and stuff, I don't, ex I don't expect that to be a problem with healing potions and stuff. Um, Just play smart. Yeah. Oh, and... Oh, and as far as... We don't need to get into that right now, but I I promise it's not going to lose out on, like, in-game savior yeah, ability. I've got some heal stuff. Like <laughs> not too much. I mean... Um, yeah, the cleric's got, like, some late-game really good, like, revival spells especially. That sure. Some consider pretty important, but I think we'll manage. Um... So I guess <laughs> that's too bad. He really he had the narrative thing I was gonna pivot on, and now I'm kind of drawing a blank. So I think we just gotta jump right into it. Hold on. <laughs> so let's just say you two continue down here to the shore, um, because Drus, you are getting a lay of the land, the land because why you're here, and um, Duncan, you are just thankful to get here. Do you, um, you two have anything you'd like to say to each other in game? Now that you've arrived at this place, uh, I don't expect much. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed the company. It's much uh, more enjoyable to travel with a companion. 
it has been great. Indeed. Well, I so I've heard, or have assumed we've had conversation about on the way here. Um, it seems you are a uh, particularly useful in a pinch with your magic. Why, thank you. You're you're pretty good with that sword there. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> even though I did, no, it was fine. <laughs> even though I <laughs> used my sword in there, truly, I was just so uh, small from using my uh, great axe that I've swung around all day. Well, I, let us stroll I, across this beautiful beach. <laughs> and at that moment, oh, the ground beneath your feet trembles and cracks. Waves a dozen feet high begin crashing into the shore, and the sound of screaming fills the air as a stampede of beachgoers flees the sands. A chorus of shrieks add to the cacophony of shark hunter as shark hunters run from the water, pursued by humanoid creatures with fish-like heads and slick rubbery skin. It is then suddenly you hear a shriek from the elf woman down on the beach as you see four fish looking like people begin to emerge from the water off the coast. They have tridents in their hands and they very much <laughs> green scaly skin. Um, they are clicking and making some kind of weird, strange noise at each other as they start to make their way up the beach. And um, I need everyone to roll initiative. Awesome. Okay. You're welcome. And speaking of which, first up is Freya. Freya. Um, they look really unfriendly, so she's gonna um, uh, call out, Get away from the water! And then she's going to shoot at the nearest one right there with her longbow while... And then... Great. Roll an attack roll. Does a 12 hit? 12. 12 does hit. Hey! Uh, D8. Good start. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. That's... Oh, I forgot to... Uh, six damage. Six damage. And then she's going to run over here behind there. Take cover behind the the table. Right. Oh, and to double check for the tokens you guys don't control, you can't see a number on the HP bar, right? Just on your own. Correct. Nope. Okay. Good. Just a bar emptying. Yep. Yeah. Good, good. Alrighty. And um. And um, I think that is the end of my turn because okay. we're level one. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um. Next is Sawagin number one, which happens to be that one. And Sawagin number one, because he's been shot, but you're pretty far away, so I'm pretty sure he's just going to come to the closest one up here and make an attack. Yeah, what is what are what are those? They're fish people. Fish people. No, okay. not the enemies. <laughs> Oh yeah, those others. Do we know? Yeah, they're just civilians. They're um, they're an elf and a tiefling. They're teenagers. Okay. They were uh, preparing oh, spears no. on the on the beach oh. for like shark fishing or something when you guys were there. Well, fuck. We gotta save the tweens from the whatever those <laughs> things are called, ceramines. Fish people. <laughs> just save the tweens from the sardines. Oh, very good pun. Here's to hoping it doesn't kill the teenage girl. That is how <laughs> most horror movies start. First hit misses. Second hit misses. <sighs> and um, because he still has a little room, he's going to move right to there. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. 
with oh, you know how what? I forgot my own. That. Sorry. Right there. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask with the the move defensively and such. Yes, that's what I forgot. Did, is she too terrified to strike him? Um. So that's that's what I just I I messed that up. I'm going to say that I meant for him to move into this space defensively, and then he moved around to here. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I know how it works so that I can say it right. So when you move defensively, it uses double your movement speed, and as long as you do it, they can't take opportunity attacks when you move within melee range. But if they move normal speed to, like, run past you or whatever, then they could take a swipe. Um, But he's going to stay in range, so just stay there. And next is the Tiefling. The Tiefling is... Pretty terrified, but luckily is good enough friends with the elf to apparently want to try to help. So he's going to move into position. And 15 versus 12, that hits. And it's just going to stay there by his friend. And um, it is Sabagin number two's turn. Sabagin number two is going to come up to. right there <laughs> moves defensively into the space and that hits and that hits suddenly you see as the second Sawagin moves up next to the tiefling he takes his uh, first makes a bite attack against uh, his shoulder and gouges right just deep into the collarbone and as he's holding him there he takes his uh, spear and just shoves it into the side of his abdomen and he is looking rough uh, the uh, Sawakin's going to stay there. And um, Kalatar, you are up. Oh, and I'll start saying this, and then, well, somebody else is on deck, so. But after that person is Duncan. Gotcha. All right, Kalatar. I am going to rush the closest. Uh, I would like to athletically get over this table so that I can make a straight line. Because going around the table is just not going to work. Sure. You, you can move across that far. <laughs> yeah. You don't so do much. cartwheel across it, is that what you're saying? No, yeah. I'm not, not trying to do any of that. I'm trying to get through it to, to down here. And then I'm going to take my morning star and I'm going to give a little kiss to, uh, to this, this fish thing. All right. Roll and tack roll. 12 uh, hits. All right. You see as um, the half fork comes up and. Uh, you're using a uh, morning star, right? Yes. Yeah, and you just uh, you go up at first, but then you bring it down around, and you let the momentum carry it, and you take him up under the chin, and he looks dizzy and like he's not having a good time. <clears throat> All right, and um, the elf is up next. The elf, seeing um, that her friend is now very hurt and. Uh, frankly, on the edge of death, it looks like already, um, is going to make an attack to the one that looks the more hurt. Ten. Uh, and she yeah, she tries to... Uh, uh, she lunges and makes a attack with her spear, but the Sauragin steps to the side and just manages to avoid it. Um, she is going to stay there for now, though she looks very, very unsure about it. <laughs> And uh, Duncan, you're up, and then it's someone else, and then it's uh, Drifts. Okay. I'm gonna kind of run towards the towards the tables. Court, we know you can see your measuring thing, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and you're allowed to move your own character. That's fine. I trust you guys mostly to mostly. And to then just... I'm going to cast Firebolt. At that tag tag team right there, and I believe that's a uh, attack roll, right? Spell attack. Yeah. Uh, And you know where your spell attack modifier and stuff like that's. Yeah. yeah, Just making sure. Is oh fifteen? Yep, that hits. Yep. Ah, perfect ten. Nice. All right, so you see, uh. Duncan, are you bravely moving over the table, or do you look uh, pretty worried about what's going on? 
Oh, I'm just headed towards the table, so I'm not cr- crossing anything. Just like kind of putting some distance between myself and these things I've. Never- All right, and then as he nears the tables, you see him turn around and just fling a fireball at the subagi, and it hits him square in the chest and just burns across. You see his scales; it it smells pretty good, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he is in a lot of pain. And uh, let's see. And then is that it for your turn, Duncan? Yes. All right. And next is Sabagina. Numero trays. <clears throat> it's going to seeing that fireball. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's going to move up to you, and um, uh, he has to use all of his move ability to get into his uh, to your space. So if you want to, you can make an opportunity attack against him. Uh, yeah. And I am going to here. I have Warcaster, so I'm going to hit him with a oh, Firebolt. Nice. Ooh, maybe not. And that, as as he comes charging at you, you, you realize that you have a moment just to get a Fireball off, um, but he manages oh, to... Oh, jeez! But, <laughs> but in being freaked out, you fling it wide a little bit, and it just soars out and plops into the ocean. <laughs> All right. And um, the Sava game will make an attack at you. I did it again. I must keep exiting out of the dice roller. Or does it, like, go away by itself? Boop, boop. That hits. <laughs> and uh, I believe that was a... Be 4 plus 1. So 2 damage and... 4 damage. So you see the Sava game, um again, go for a bite. He grabs your arm and just sinks into your forearm. And then, again, while this one is holding you, takes the spear and shoves it into, like, the side of your hip, clipping your uh, hip bone. You feel oh. the metal clank <laughs> against your uh, uh. bone. And you are very upset that he did that. <laughs> I'm almost dead here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even paralyzed for life, you know. Maybe. We'll see if we can fix your hip. <laughs> All right, and uh, Drew, you're up. All right, and then it's someone else, and then it's Brea. Brea. All right, let's see here. So I'm gonna run up right over here. Yeah. As I'm doing that, I'm gonna yell, <laughs> "Good luck, Duncan!" Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to swing with my great axe at this fish monster here. All right, roll an attack roll. And, and you see how you can add your modifier right, to the so advanced roller? My modifier would be... Does it say it next to your weapon? In... Yeah, it's the attack roll. One more time? The attack roll, the two hit. Are you on your actions page? Yeah. Okay, so it's um, sorry, it just hit. I hit DC. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 And then damage is next to that. Yep. Right. So twenty plus that number. Actually, it's not a twenty. No, you're oh, rolling the attack roll. Right. Yes. The twenty plus your hit, which is five. Correct. That is going to be twenty. <laughs> that hits. Sweet. That's going to be 10. Oh. Oh, shoot. Uh, well, that plus 3, which is 11. Forgot to add my attack. Yep, that's fine. All right. You see Bruce uh, rush up to the Salagin and. Oh, man. <laughs> um, take a swing. Gets really close, even though he has a really long weapon, and uh, oh, yeah. manages to haft up and s- swing down with his axe and um, uh, cleave right into the collarbone of the Saugi. It screams out in pain and uh, is very, very, very nearly on the edge of death. <clears throat> very, very nearly. <laughs> All right, and then next is the last Saugi. Lasso Gein sees you, thinks you are a big shiny threat. <coughs> uh, uh, Druce 
and is going to make a bite and spear attack at you. Uh, goes to bite you, and the bite, uh, you manage to pull your arm free as he tries to bite at your bicep. Um, but then, while you're distracted, comes around with your spear and hits you uh, squ uh, like right in the abdomen, right in the guts. And does 4 damage. That's nothing. Brush it off. And you can edit your damage yourself, Court. Oh, yes, I can. Gotta let you guys do some things. All right. And uh, it's just going to stay there. Freya, you are up. All right. Let's see. None of them are in combat with me. So I'm going to... Any of them look really wounded? Um, the one under Cal, right? Yeah, the, the well, the one under no, the one under you, Drews, is uh, the one? the most hurt. No, uh, oh yeah, you're right. Um, how do I do? And then that one looks wounded too, right? This one here is the most wounded. This one is uh, also wounded, but not as much. All right. How are you picking your up? Like, um, like... yeah, that. She's gonna shoot that one because she she saw it was really fast. Okay. <laughs> Just move it. <laughs> roll oh. and attack. Roll. Hey. That hits. Now roll a D8 plus 3 this time. Remember the Ds of 3s. Six again. What? <laughs> All right. And uh, Kalatar, you hear a by your ear as uh, suddenly an arrow sinks into the Salgin uh, next to you and that uh, better not be meant for me and uh, he is looking if it was it would have hit you and not it <laughs> nice uh, he's looking pretty rough now too near pretty pretty hurt and, and um, I think that's all I got because I'm a level one fighter yeah <laughs> and uh, next is Saugi number one, who is uh, very much, looks very unsure about w what he wants to do, but he, uh, oh, that's so unfortunate, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's going to make an attack against the tiefling. Wait, <laughs> which one's number one, sorry? Um, what'd you do? That one. Which one did Faria just shoot? This one. The same one. Very low. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> yep, they're both very low. Those two, close to each other. Um, so, yeah. If I exit out of the dice roll one more time. <laughs> if only I had rolled average. <sighs> Damn it. Oh. All right. Oh, and right, it's two. Okay, that one misses, and it's just the bite attack. Oh, come on, buddy. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh. I can impose disadvantage. I just finished the dice roll. You gotta say that before I finish the dice roll. Unless it's... what? What is the ability? Oh, that's it's your just, protection yeah, ability? Yeah, it's my protection, yeah. I can use my reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Oh yeah, it's just using... Okay, sorry. I'm mixing up rolls in my head. So yeah, use your reaction to do that. <laughs> um... So, right, so on that first one, just got to roll a d20 again. 11. Warrior. Misses! You did it! You barely... You see... <laughs> as I um, hey, focus up on me, fishy! The, uh, that Saugeen is rare enough to uh, bite the tiefling that is looking so haggard and suddenly Kalatar shoves his shield right in front of him and deflects the spear upwards and it flies right over the tiefling's head. The Sawagin is noticeably upset. <clears throat> Alright, and then the tiefling is very happy he gets his turn because he <laughs> is going to bail and hope this works out. Um, having seen the fireball and the bow coming from here, he's going to 
attempt to move, but um, both of these guys would get attacks of opportunity. He can disengage as an action. Oh, you're absolutely right, and totally, that's what a smart tiefling who's almost dead would do. So, <laughs> disengage. He's going to get as far away as possible. <clears throat> and, um, and, and thankfully, next to the uh, archer who seemed to be helping. Um, and I don't think... Oh, you know what? Actually, while he's like... A little closer. Um, he's going to turn around because he's so thankful and make... Oh, no, he uses action. No, I'm sorry. No, he doesn't do that. So he just uh, goes there. And that's... <laughs> ah, never mind! <laughs> 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 um, and Savagin so number two's turn. Um, <laughs> Savagin so two is like crippled and breathing hard and bleeding a lot and is not having fun so again to trying to figure out how to get at this axe out of his shoulder yeah <laughs> and and again while this one seems really unsure about everything um it's still going to just stay right there and uh go ahead and take an attack against Drus. oh shit okay that's two attacks uh the goes for a bite. The bite misses because he's biting under your chainmail, and it's like not very effective. And um, but then a again, as he's going for a spear, he just shoves it up. But oh wait, what's your AC? It's eighteen, right? Six. Sixteen. No, yeah, eighteen would be later. I'm crazy. Uh, and uh, either way, hits and uh, manages to shove the spear into your shoulder, and. Three damage. Ha! I literally ha in his face. <laughs> oh yeah, and oh. It's, it slides under your your shoulder, spalding or whatever that's called. I forget what that's. I think it's spalding, right? Whatever. Uh, pauldron. Pauldron. Thank you. What's a spalding? It's a brand of shoe. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's got it. I'm not making that up. Anyways, you're uh, thinking about a spalder. What's that? That's that that is what. So that's uh, part of the harness of plate armor oh, on okay. the shoulder. Okay. So pauldrons are the things put that you put on top of the the uh, uh, spalder. spalders are the shoulder pieces. Yeah. Single plate covering the shoulder with bands joined mm -hmm. by straps of leather or rivet. It's what lets it um, lets you move your arm. Basically, you put a pauldron. On top of the spalders. Also a brand of basketball. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning so many things today. All right, guys. All right no, stop that. <laughs> All right, so I just did Sawagin. Oh, no. Yeah, Sawagin do just attacked you. And again, it's going to stay there. Um, I don't know. I guess because he is going to try to GTFO. <laughs> and now that he's attacked you. <laughs> From the paladin that just laughed at his attack. Um but that's going to give you and the elf um, opportunity attacks against it. So, yeah. Court, you first. Um, you're just gonna you're just gonna roll a, a normal attack with your modifier, just like how but you. I need a normal. chance to hit, right? What? I mean, I still have to roll. Who's right? Court? That's what I mean. Sorry, oh, Drews. sorry, uh, Drews. Drews. Okay. No, I was. I've been. I was like, is that the elf? Sorry. I when like, I, I'll, not... I'll try to be better about that because I wouldn't call him Drews in game. Six. <laughs> yep. And that yes. one. Come <laughs> on. And you hear a very fishy. <laughs> oh. So you see, as the Sargin's trying to get away, the uh, Drew swings with his great axe and just right over his head. It's not not very close. And uh, <laughs> then the elf girl makes a spirit. You pass. better run. <laughs> And it's going to hit. And it doesn't matter what it is. That Sogin is dead. When the fish person runs faster than you can swing your axe. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Dead. All right. Um, that was Sogin 2. Who I can? Cross off. 
All right. And uh, Kaltar, you're up, and then it's the elf followed by Duncan. All right, I'm going to hit the hit the Salgeen that I told the focus up, try to kill the tiefling. Yep, all right, roll and sacro. With your morning star. You go and you take a swing in its head, and it just steps to the side, and you see your morning star sink into the sand. I yell over, it happens to everyone! Fuck! <laughs> 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 uh, okay. um, are you going to do anything else in your turn, Kaltar? Mm, is flanking a thing in five years? That just three point five. Just three point five. Okay. No, I use I use the I use flanking rules. It's and it's just standing uh, across from each other. It's the Didn't, exact opposite uh, space. Didn't this elf get hit? Or no. 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 Okay. Then I'm gonna move defensively to here. All right. Take take just one step with my shield up, readjusting my morning star. Alrighty. Uh, and uh yeah, and if I miss anything like that, like like you know, feel free to tell me. <laughs> I'm definitely uh, all right, that's in Kalatar's turn. Yeah, now the elf, seeing you move into position, seeing that the Sourgeen is distracted, is going to make an attack at it, feeling a little more confident. That hits. And it, she is hitting it with its spear. Do, 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 do. do. Five damage, and that sucker is toast. Yeah, you see, you see the elf plunge its spear just right into the face of the Sabagin, and it makes a little clicky noise as it falls into the sand. <clears throat> All right. That was Sabagin three, I think. And uh, Duncan, you're up. All right, I am going to um, cast Witch Bolt on the Sawagin right in front of me. All righty. <sighs> and I believe that's just... That's going to not work out for me real well. <laughs> yep. Not so much. You go, you see lightning crackle in this wizard's fingertips, and it goes and <laughs> tries to shoot off lightning at it, and it just flings all around it in the sand, manages to somehow not hit it. Um, do you do anything else you turn, Durs? Nope. All right. And, uh, or I mean Duncan, sorry. Oops. Uh, Durs, you're up. Oh, sorry, my damn mic. Why does it do that? Mm-hmm. All right, sorry about that. I hmm, am going to just go ahead and swing at this one right next to me. All right. Oh, wait. Uh, I have reach, though, don't I? Yeah. Can I step back a little bit? If you leave, <laughs> you will take an opportunity attack from that Sabagin next to you. Then never mind, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. I'm going to swing a great axe. Is that it? Perfect. Why do I keep doing that? Plus three again, sorry. So seven? Yes. All right, you see as the shiny gold <laughs> paladin reaches up and just plummets the down the great axe right into the collarbone, and the Saugeen screams out in pain. <laughs> like that. <laughs> and uh, next is Saugeen number four. Yay. Which is <laughs> still next to Duncan. <laughs> Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> Um, yeah, he sees his friends dying all around him, but there's this just one juicy that he can turn the tide if he just takes this hit. Uh. 
So I'm guessing he's attacking, right? Yes. I'm going to cast shield. Okay. Okay. That bumps my AC up to 17. Right. Oh, shit. So you block one of them. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I have one hit point. I'm dead. Yeah, you are unconscious. Oh, no! Roll damage anyway, because he might kill me. Uh, that wouldn't be possible with the one attack. Oh. Uh, um. What color is good for unconscious but not dead? Orange. No, so you just you just click the click the the token, and then the little toggle that looks like an analog stick. You can just there's like a face with a mask you can put on the token. Oh, like sleepy or or just the X for I'm out of here. Death or, zone. You know, you, you could be strong like me. <laughs> oh, the X. Or you can be incredibly snaily. How do I get rid of the tent color now? Uh, you click just, it cl again. just click it again. Um, so yep, you see the <laughs> Sawagin take a spear. Um, goes for... Uh... Well, yeah, he would have just gone for the bite attack first and bitten right into your neck and... <laughs> You scream as you fall backwards, unconscious, onto the ground. Uh, everyone takes note of that. Uh, and uh, and now that he has done that, he is going to move to here. Oh, no. Here. Oh, shit. <laughs> and... Uh, Fariah, you're up. Okay. Um, she's going to be like... <sighs> Merde. And then she's going to... One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Drop her bow and stab the guy in the back. Okay. If you use... Do you have... Is that all your movement speed? Yes. If you move in with that last bit, since you can't move defensively, you'll take an opportunity attack. That's fine. Okay. So he's going to use his reaction to do that first. Misses? Oh, it's e. just one attack. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. Okay, so misses, yep. Uh, and then she's going to pull out her uh, rapier and and her, and uh, use a bonus action to pull her scimitar. And she can only stab with the rapier, though. Because bonus action to draw a second weapon. Uh, here it goes. Nice. And the rapier is d8. Oh, I forgot I have advantage in that. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You Actually, could I, could crit. Crit. I could you roll could a crit. 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, but still, that was also a good roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one! <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> At least I can hit! <laughs> Four damage to the guy. Nice. And uh -huh. here's hoping that we can get this done, because I don't have any way to help you up there except make it worse. <laughs> yeah. um, and is that it for your turn, Freya? Is indeed. Okay. Um, and just for future reference, um, as far as I know, like drawing your stuff is a free item interaction you have every turn, and you only have one of those every turn, unless you have the dual wielder feat that allows you to draw two weapons at the same time. There's nothing about using your bonus action to draw weapons. Yeah, I think it's a free action to drop or... You can drop anything you want for free at yeah. any time. But yeah. Right, but to draw, I thought was... To draw requires, to to draw draw requires a free item. Like, everyone can draw one weapon for but free you can draw as using part anything. Of your... Sorry? Uh, rules is written, you can draw as part of your attack. 
So you can draw a sword. Yeah, that's the same. It it's it's the same thing. It's just it's just for free. Is what I'm saying. You have one free item interaction yeah. that includes drawing your weapon or and by item I mean on your thing, not interacting with an object in the world. Um, yeah, I was going to say the the, the thing the thing yeah. the thing is you need a feat to be able to draw two. Yeah, that's yeah. why there is a feat called dual wielder, which allows you to draw two instead of just one. Yeah, the bonus action yeah. does not allow that. Just for future reference, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with you see her uh, uh, the uh, woman run up. Uh, she, uh, I assume you just throw your bow over your shoulder or something. Uh, she just drops it on the right. No, what am I saying? Yeah, on the just table. drop it. Yeah, sure, great. Um, run up, draw your rapier, and just stab it right into the top of the shoulder. Like it feels like it hooks under its his clavicle for a second as you pull it back out. All right, and uh, it's the tiefling's turn. Uh, the tiefling, seeing how bad this is going, but feeling like they still have the advantage, is going to. can do that right from here, is going to uh, throw his spear at um, the Saugi next to that Freya just attacked. And hits. For six damage. You just... Uh, Freya and Drew, so you just all of a sudden hear a clip, and uh, the Sauragines scream out Arrgh! as um, the, a spear lands right in its leg and it, like right above his knee and looks very uncomfortable, not, not at all pleasant. Um, and the tiefling's going to stay right where he is. I guess he'll move, he's going to move a little closer to. Uh, oh, he wouldn't. No, he doesn't have anything. Um, is going to move next to the wizard, <laughs> the magic -y sparkle person, to try to uh, see if he can help. Um, Kalatar, you're up. And then it's the elf person and then Duncan. Is it a thing to give assist on the saving throws? Can I go over and assist the person bleeding out on the beach? Yeah, well, yeah, you can just, uh, what you would do is you can make a medicine check, whatever your medicine is, and if you roll a, uh, I think it's a 10, or is it 11, just to s sustain that. 10. The DC is sure, 10, yeah. and that stabilizes. Yep. 10, stabilize, yeah, so you just make a medicine check. So yeah, yeah if you move up there, make a medicine check, so yeah, just roll d20 plus your medicine modifier, medicine bonus. Hmm. That is a fail. You're trying to... Blood is just coming out of his neck, and you're trying to use some cloth and stuff to put it up, but it's really pouring out. You are not able to stop that. You look fine. This this is fine. I see it all the time. You're fine. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's all I got. All right. Elf Lady, now not being surrounded anybody and seeing that her um, friend is mostly safe and helping, is just going to... That's what she would do. So she moves up. The closest Sawagin makes an attack, misses, and um, it's going to sit there and hope th <laughs> hope this works out after the fact. Um, Duncan, make a death saving throw for me. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Yay. You have a success. And mark one success, please. <clears throat> Alrighty. And, um, Drews, you're up. Great. Followed by someone else, followed by Freya. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to attack the one directly right of me. The, okay, so, if, yeah, if you attack the one that Freya is on the other side of you from, the one with 12 hit, or... Yeah, that one that is in between you two. You'll have advantage on the attack roll. Cool. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Yep. So roll twice, pick the higher. Which is roll. Great. Let's do it again. Pretty good. Okay, so you hit. Awesome. 
Now, let's go to PA. Hey, I did it right this time. Yeah! Ten. Are you using 3D dice? Because I like hear a noise when you're rolling. Yeah, yep. like yeah I think we're all dice? using 3D dice. Yeah, oh, dice yeah. of his color rolls out. You can see it. I don't see it. I must not have it turned on. Yeah, just go to settings in the chat. And then enable 3D dice, automatically roll 3D dice. Scroll down to the bottom of that and hit reconnect. And then it'll work. Where are the settings, I'm sorry? Top and right. Oh, I see it, I see it. Yeah. It's, you do automatic too? Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that one. No one already can see your guys. Yeah, that way I can see your guys' too. And your <laughs> dice is whatever color you are at the bottom there. Yeah, cool. That's cool. All right. Um, so, 10. 10 damage? All right. Correct. You swing around, you bring it up over your head, bring it down into its clavicle, you cleave real deep. And the Sabagin is very nearly oh. dead. <laughs> All right, and then the Sawagin has now just been effed up, is in between the two of you. Um, I think he realizes if he tries to get away at this point, he's going to die, so he's just going to make an attack against the one who just hit him, Drews. Yep. And, uh... So do you guys see that? Yeah. Oh, but yeah. you guys saw that in the first place. I wasn't doing that secretly, was I? Yep. That's fine. All right, so 20. Plus three, damn. Does it go away oh. by itself? Or... Okay. Um, it does if you click it. Yeah. You can go away, or, or use the you next roll person another rolls. One. That's definitely yeah. going to hit me. Right. Oh, and right, it does two attacks. That one misses. Whew. So, And the first one's just a, D, or just a bite attack. Of course. And... Uh, what about advantage? And you take four damage. Oh! <laughs> yeah. He does have advantage. That's good. Oh, oh. well, that's a good... Oh! oh. oh it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Everything's fine, guys. Fine. I'm okay. You're fine. <laughs> Even when your your friends sell you out, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you take four damage. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, gonna, he left Duncan. <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> he did leave Duncan. Good luck. You're right. Duncan and then watches him go hey, down. This chief league with like I assume one HP over here. Again, you saw the wizard like very nearly bleeding out. All of a sudden, out of breath, like I've barely able to stand that. up. <laughs> I had faith that things would have definitely gone differently. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. All right. Um. All right, so that was, and that's how he's just going to stay there. Um. And Bray, you're up. Well, um, drawing second, a uh, weapon. Yep. Not gonna stab this one first. Okay. Here goes nothing. Let's see if this works. Oh, damn it. I was supposed to do it separate. Oh, well. Oh. Uh, uh, just do 14. it over. That doesn't count. Oh, okay. unless you... Just do it over. Do it over. For okay. Me. Let's do... 1D... Oh. Okay. That... Oh, uh, you just did the damage, too. Okay. 11. Uh, yeah. And so that one is... Toast with your first hit. And then she's going to go over here. And let's see, that's move defensively into that. So that's 5, 15, <laughs> 25. Damn. <laughs> Actually, fuck it. Give me an attack of opportunity if you want to. <laughs> he, he, he will take it. Um... <laughs> Miss. Yay. And she's going to bonus attack that one. Okay. And... 
hits this time, I'll actually remember to do it. There we go. <laughs> and it's just a D8 this time. Yep, without it's any ability hit. modifier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, your scimitar is a six, isn't it? Uh, oh, it's a light one-handed weapon? I don't know. Oh! Ooh. Your other thing's a rapier, isn't it? Oh, yeah, shit, they're a rapier. That's they not... Both, but... both need to be light. To me. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, never mind. She doesn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Scimitar is martial, too. But, but, yeah, but... Yeah, they're both martial, but the Scimitar is light. Oh, and, D8, and a rapier. But a rapier is not light and a D8. Yeah, which is two, two light weapons weird. to bonus action attack. Yeah, it's like... So, normally, that's the thing about light weapons. They're balanced because they do 1D6. Yeah. Which basically means the rapier is now... A pointless weapon, yeah. you, which I should have oh, thought about. This will be this will be a good time to say I'm essentially just going to do <laughs> like the adventure league thing. If you want to change small things for the first few yeah. levels, go right. Is ahead. it okay we're, if we're I have and... if I have a light main hand weapon since both of them deal yeah. D8 with the rules? <laughs> just, just go ahead and do it for these first yeah, few levels. We're at first level, especially we're working it out. It's it's a sa- it's basically a saber anyway. So sure, I mean, like. It's weird. Weapons are weird because yeah. the thing that they call a rapier in D and D is really an epee. And anyway, could be, yeah. Um, All right, but yeah. so better for your turn. Yes. Okay. All right, and uh, uh, please not hit that way. This uh, other Sabagin is up now. The last Sabagin. Now see, suddenly he is by himself. Um, and is going to just try to get away. Switch is going to get, but both of you have it. If if you're flanking, I assume your opportunity attacks get disadvantage, right? What do you mean? This Sawagin in the middle here is going to attempt to run away from both of you. Is he going to disengage? Oh, yeah. Then, <laughs> then we don't matter. get opportunity attacks. Hey, the Sawagin disappears into the ocean. Oh. <laughs> That dude is out of here, and you guys are mostly alive. Hey! <laughs> All right, so you guys realize that the that last Sawagin is left. You realize, though, um, I maybe should have mentioned during the combat at some point. Uh, oh, no, I said it at the beginning. That's right. The, you guys feel quaking constantly while this fight is happening. I should have just put that in. And, um... Uh, the water is still pushing against the uh, the shore, and um, I need... Uh, Am I making another death save? I was going to say, wait, before that, can I run yeah. over to him? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Can I run over to him and use <whistles> healing hands and restore one HP? Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that, natural 20. Dang! <laughs> He gets to one HP and gets <laughs> up. Good. It's the best healing he's ever had in his life. All right. So, uh, yep, Duncan, you are back to one hit point. <laughs> Sorry about that, pal. And I punch him on the shoulder very lightly. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, let's see here. Is anyone doing anything else real quick before my next thing? Nope. Okay. Um, I mean, that away burnt from the water. fishy thing smelled good. Where did it go? That's um, this one here, I believe. Yeah, can I take a little bit off and, and pack it away for lunch later? Yeah, definitely. You uh, make a... Uh, are you just taking... Like, are you literally flaying him? Well, I mean, there's just like a chunk that's burnt, I imagine. Yeah, across the chest. Yeah, so his I'm chest. just going to take parts of that. I'm not trying to take the whole fish. I'm just like, so, ooh, that looks snacky. I'm going to pack some of that. Yeah. Um, so make a uh, survival check for me. All right. All right. Well, I'll say you managed to tear and rip it off. It's not pretty, but you, you get uh, one serving of meat. Usable meat out of it. Mm. One fish man meat. Yep. Nice. <laughs> I'm sure no one around you is appalled or anything. Any anyone making uh, disturbed faces or anything? I mean, I'm a half orc. I don't give a fuck. 
Wait, what did you say? Uh, you cut out there, Cam. Does anyone? Is anyone? <laughs> all right, is anyone doing anything else? Oh. Nope. All right. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> Duncan, you come back and take your breaths, and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm still fucking alive." And <laughs> um, uh, make a uh, uh, intelligence check for me. And. Just a flat intel check? Yep. Seven. <laughs> okay. Who uh, Who else has decent intelligence? So I'm not to look through everyone's character sheet. Ground go shake shake. <laughs> Ground also <laughs> go shake shake. <laughs> so is that nobody else? I thought I thought I saw one other person. But, oh, it was probably the cleric. <laughs> yeah, that could have been. That could have been. Um, just okay. plain intelligence. Yeah. So, oh, somebody, oh, somebody else, make an intelligence check. Just one other person, though. Call it up. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Everybody, make an intelligence check together. <laughs> one more person. Listen, I was just dead like a minute ago. Oh, oh look at that! Oh, <laughs> okay. You guys just notice that things are very shaky and scary. <laughs> oh, I got this. I got this, guys. How do I make the multiplier a negative one? Oh, no, one? that wouldn't have changed that. Anyway. Ten. There we go. Ten. <laughs> hey. That's twice as smart as me right now. Uh, hey, oh, you I'm saw me cutting like meat off this it. fish, man. I'm a smart fella, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um... Okay, so you guys feel the ground shaking around you, the waves crashing on the sea. You've managed to survive this encounter, and you look around, because there's a lot of island around you. Um, I need somebody to make a perception check. Uh, perception? I can do that. Okay, go, go ahead. It. And somebody else can too, if they want. I was going to say, I can send my owl up circle. Okay, Ooh. you can do that and use That's him for your perception, yeah. Yeah, that sounds better. You can do both. I would do both. Okay. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Kautar. Everything. I've got perception, I'll tell you what. I'm not smart, but I can see it. Okay. And okay. Hold on. I get advantage. Oh, so. 22. Yep. Good. All right. So. Uh, you guys see. Um. Isn't there a quick button for just reveal everything? Nope. Now you gotta drag out boxes. Fine. That's only if you have the advanced version with the advanced fog of war. All right. You see. Everything. <laughs> yeah, both of you, especially with the owl combined, I'll say you both notice that to the um, west shore, you see that um, a lot of the ground, the, a lot of the sand that was there is suddenly gone. It's sinking very fast on this side of the island, um, and it is already reaching the porch of what looked like some nice-ish looking abandoned... Um, huts, because uh, you don't see anybody else in the area on the west shore. Um, to the north, you see desperate villagers are trying to swim to the north part of the village on the mainland. They're trying to get across 50 feet of water, um, and uh, people on the other side are calling to them calls of encouragement. You guys can do it! Come on! And... Um, it won't actually help but get over here. I'm going to start stealthily moving towards the boat I came from with increasingly... One more thing. Uh, and then on the west shore, you guys see docks. Or, I'm sorry, on the east shore, you guys see docks. And um, you see three ships. Two of them are gone. They have already dropped their sail and are moving away from the docks. Uh, but one of them is still sitting there, and you see um, some... 
ship crew people fighting what, from this distance, vaguely look like giant crab people, but you're not entirely sure. Hmm. Is it the ship I came from? Uh, uh, it is. Okay, it then is yeah, the I'm 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 beelining for that. Uh, Which ship is that exactly? It is the big one. Okay. And um, oh, I guess I should reveal that stuff. Hold on. <laughs> so yeah, you see a number of what look like crew members fighting a number of crab people, and one of the Sawagin that you just uh, dispatched personally. So. Uh, where would you guys like to go? What would you guys like to do? I would like to start heading for the boat that uh, I came from, because the ground is falling apart. Okay. And uh, the rest of you? Uh, I look at Duncan and I say, let's get a drink. And we head to- or I head towards the bar. Um, Faria runs over to get- to slide over the table and grab her bow on the way. Okay. <laughs> Else? Everyone's <laughs> invited. <laughs> uh, I'm going to walk very slowly in that direction. Okay. At th- it's at this time you see um, uh, the elf girl go up to her friend and start asking if she's okay and trying to help with his wounds best she can, but she doesn't really seem to have anything to do. Um, and uh, Juice, you said you were going to the bar, right? <laughs> Um, so Maria whoever at the elf and the and the chiefling and says, "You want to get off the island to the north?" Oh, uh, the chiefling looks back and he says, "Oh, I think that's a mighty fine idea. I, I'll have to maybe take you up on that." Um, but Freya, you notice at this point, um, coming up behind you. Do, 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 a white-figured um, teenage, or a white-robed teenager, um, a human with shoulder-length blonde hair, um, uh, is running up to you. Seems very worried, <clears throat> and is just like, "Oh my, oh my God! Uh, there, there's a bunch of giant crabs attacking the docks over there." And, <laughs> They, they look like they're in a lot of trouble. I'm wondering if any of you guys can help. Um, if any of you can help, I have the ability to heal. If anyone... Oh, oh, you, you, you look like you might need some help. Uh, yeah, oh, both right of here. you, actually. But you especially. Um, <laughs> raise his hand enthusiastically. <laughs> uh, I fall down as I raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the teenage acolyte is going to go ahead and move up to you and cast Cure Wounds. Um, which is going to be... How far am I from the boat? Um. I didn't move me. Who asked, I... I'm sorry? Kalatar. Kalatar. I will get the place. Um, I'll say one action, I'll say you could move 30 feet closer to it. So you would have been around where Freya was, probably, or past the bench. Yeah, She's next just... to you. So yeah, you see this white robe figure run past you, Kalatar, and just come up right to the... Wizard and cast cure wounds and um, heals you for seven health. Uh, I'm back to full. Duncan. Dang. All right. And um, I also look over my shoulder and I go, Could I get one of those? No. Hold on. <laughs> As I still am stumbling to the bar, <laughs> very near death still. Good luck, you got this. <laughs> oh, you know what? I thought it just said one character, but it doesn't. It just says willing to cast Cure Wounds. Uh, so yeah, he can definitely cast Cure Wounds on you. Nine. Not cool. I am also at full. So, <laughs> she was trying to... Uh, I guess I would say she got... Before she elicited any kind of uh, promise of helping the dock workers, she got caught up and decided just to help the obviously effed up people. So, uh, what are you what are you guys going to do from here? You you see the battle going on at the docks. You see the stuff to the north. You see the empty houses to the east. To uh, Darkle, I'm west. coming to save you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we head that way. Yeah, uh, as soon Everyone's as she's, as soon yeah, as I'll she's gotten her home. bow and has adjusted 
I grabbed a couple of arrows to hold in her other hand. She's she's gonna head off that way. In okay. fact, she's just gonna shoot when she gets to here. Okay, that's great. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'll move you guys, but let's have um, all you guys roll initiative again. All right, um, Freya, you are up first. Jeremy Freya. I realized I'd muted myself. Uh, she's gonna <laughs> shoot the fish person uh, by birth in the neck. If she can. Let's see if she can. Whee! Nope. Yep, that is a miss. And other than that, uh, wait, is that a... How tall is that wall? Um, that's a... Uh, I'm gonna say that's like 10 feet tall. Alright, so other than that, she's gonna just move over to there. Gotcha, alright. Then your turn. And that's her turn. Alright. <clears throat> um... Kajori's turn. Uh, or, you guys... <laughs> you guys see a person whose name you don't know. Uh, uh, up by the crab people, uh, you see the uh, one of the humans <clears throat> make a... Uh, make an attack with a scimitar against the crab person, or crab creature, next to him. And... Uh, is just going to stay there, and then it is actually that same crab's turn. And he is going to strike back at the person who hit him. Craw the You see a crab, then strike back, making a claw attack. Hits. Five damage to... Oh. Four damage. That was... No, three damage. Alright, and, uh... Now it's, a. Uh, Duncan's turn. Okay. I am... If I go here, can I see them? Yes. Okay, I'm going to... Two... Three... And I'm going to cast uh, Firebolt on this crab person. I think you need to move a little closer. Oh, range, what's the range is 120. Right, sorry. You're right. <laughs> um, yep. Go ahead and roll your attack roll. Against the crab person, you said? That hits? Yeah. And... Whew. Not good. Two damage. Two damage. Every little bit counts. And then I'm going to move... Uh, I'll stay here. Stay right here. Well out of attack distance. Alright. And uh, then it's a couple of NPCs turn, and then Kaltari will be up. Um, first is going to be crab number two. <clears throat> um, he's going to make uh oh he's going to yeah, he's just gonna make an attack against the door see the crab brings his claw up and just smacks it into the side of Kajori's head hard to tell if it's gray or blue but what some of you might know as a sea elf um it's going to attack the nearest do I know any of these people from the boat? Like, which would... ones of these are from the boat, and which ones are just were dock workers? Um, all all the people you see there might have seen on like uh, several of them look familiar. Um, it looks like it's probably the crew of the ship that is still there. The one I rode here on. Yep. All right. Um. Oh, and uh, that. Elf is going to make an attack against the crab next to him. And that hits. Oh, does not land a very solid blow, though. That ends his turn. And, uh... Yep, Kalatar, you're up. That's, um... 
several NPCs and then Drews. I'm gonna move across this field into this crab okay. and that's my max movement so I can't move defensively. Okay. Opportunity attack. Fourteen. Pathetic. Misses. All right. See the crab go and try to take a backhanded swing at the approaching half orc, and half orc manages to step aside, <laughs> block it with the shield. So block the shield. Well, uh, I know the good meat's in the claws, so <laughs> I'll bring my morning star down. All right. Edits. Nice. Oh, that crab's toast. We're going to feast tonight, boys. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Kaltar? Just a glorious war cry. All right. It's the Sawagin's turn. Uh, the Sawagin, seeing you dispatch his friend, is going to actually leave Boerth and to come down and meet you and takes an ap- attack of opportunity. From me? No, um... Both. Oh, from Borth. Borth. Yeah. Uh, and that's a miss. Oh, no, Sawagin. Nope, that's a hit. Uh, so that is... Okay, so that's six damage. So yeah, as that... As you see that Sawagin move towards you, uh, Kalatar, uh, you see the guy that was standing behind him take a swipe at his back and just carve down his back meat. Um, and then he is going to make an attack at you. Miss, and oh, that's its. Uh, oh, sorry, that was slow. Uh, nope, still miss. Yep, and that was its bite attack, and then it's gonna make a spear attack, which also misses. I'll bash it away with my shield. Yep, that you do, and uh, then it's. Oh, now it's Boer's turn. Uh, Boerth is going to f- follow up. He's gonna move, take an opportunity attack from that crab up there. Which hits six damage, and then after being after he turns around and getting smacked by that crab, Borth is going to attack the uh, Sawagin. Hits, and just uh, just cut across, um, cuts his ear, <laughs> cuts the the finny parts on the side of the Sawagin's face with his uh, scimitar. Uh, you're gonna see the crab up here. Make an attack at Kajori. Uh, hits. Five damage. And Kajori is out. <clears throat> and Drew, you're up. Oh, all right. I... We'll run to here. I'll just double check. Oh yeah, I can go for it. To here. And we'll reach back and grab a javelin. Great. And oh how do we pay? That's a thing, right? Click and hold. Oh, is that it? I will yep. attack that thing. Get, oh yeah. god. Roll a one and kill me with it. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna work. Don't you worry. Oh, there, oh, there it goes. goes. There it goes. Yep. Um, I don't know how many I just rolled. Uh, just it, like, it'll be your first one, and it shows one. it in order, so that Love will be it. a miss. Well, I mean, this guy is flanked on both sides. Oh, you're right. So eighteen, but he Hold isn't on. flanking. Yeah, no, that was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't left me to die back there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think flanking doesn't apply that way, right? I haven't thought of it. No, I it don't only know. Applies in, to the people actually flanking. That's, that's in three point five. As long as he's distracted, you're flanking. That's not how it works in five. The, yeah, I'm, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, I'll, I'll go right. with that. Yeah, I'll go with that for now. That that's just the people Close. who are flanking. 
So yeah, you see, you see, Drews charge up. He gets as far as he can. As he's coming to a stop, he reaches back, and almost one movement, he just moves the javelin up in his hand, throws it, and maybe in his haste, it just flies wide and uh, <laughs> hits the uh, crab corpse <laughs> standing, sitting right next to it. Um, anything else, Drews? Double tap. Nope, that's it. <laughs> okay. You see from on the ship a uh, dwarven woman um, come up to the uh, front of the ship, looks down and sees uh, all the madness that's going on, and uh, sees that Kajori is lying on the ground, unconscious, and uh, realizes you can't get over there, is just going to cast Sacred Flame at the Sawagin standing there. And the Sawagin's going to make a saving throw. Fails. So does. A damage. That'll end her turn. Next is up crab number four is dead. All right. And then from the docks, you see uh, a half orc. She is so beautiful. <laughs> going to cast a fire is going to stay up here actually and cast a fire spell at the guy over here that's a hit that's a crit that's oh that is a crit yep so that would be uh fourteen damage Savagin is, or that uh, crap person is toast. Alright, and uh, it's going to stay right there. And we're back around to Freya. Well, let's see. Step out, peek. Uh, down, down, down. Looks hurt. Looks hurt. That's in melee with him. She's gonna shoot that one. The one up by um The uh, one that's hurt a little already? Yeah, and the one that that's next to the, the, the hurt guy. Okay. Alright, gonna make your tech roll. <sighs> Damn. That's a miss. And then she's gonna step back in. <laughs> so she you see Freya, she tries to shoot. The crab, the arrow flies off its, uh, bounces off its shell, unfazed. And back in cover. <laughs> and, uh... Turn done. Kajori is still down. Uh, crab one is dead. Forgot to mark that one off. Um, so that makes it, uh, Duncan's turn. All right, There'll well, be a couple people, and then Kalatar. I want to step out, and I want to take an attack on this one. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast Toll the Dead. It's okay. a DC 13 wisdom DC check. DC 13, okay. The crab people have... Well, that's... that's a save. And it's yep. just no damage, right? No damage. Yeah. Unfortunate. So you see the wizard making some symbols and words and stuff, and all of a sudden you think you briefly hear the sound of bells off in the distance, and it just suddenly goes quiet. <clears throat> that crab is just going to... This crab here is just going to attack the sea elf next to him. And... Uh, it's lagging on me rolling down. There we go. That'll hit. And really bashes the sea elf with uh, his claw, and the sea elf yelps in pain. Um, Kaltar, you're up. Fish head, crab legs, I am going to eat for days. <laughs> uh, that hits. 
Seven damage. Oh, and did you roll with advantage? You might get the crit. So, oh, you have thirteen health, not the Salgain. Okay, the Salgain is dead, anyways. Right. I'm gonna continue humming to myself as I skip over five, ten, fifteen, so I can move defensively into this guy. Nice. You see, Kalatar reach up, really putting everything he has in it, and just brings the. Uh, his uh, morning star just right down on top of uh, the Sawagin's head, slightly caving it in. Sawagin goes <laughs> and falls backwards, and uh, you see him skip along unhindered. And uh, the Sawagin is dead. <sighs> um. Uh, Boerth is going to move back around uh, Kalatar to where he can get to here, moving defensively. And, um, oh, I'm in here. And uh, is going to make an attack against the crab right there. That's a miss. So you see Boer take a scimitar and swing at the crab, hits it right on the back of the shell, unaffected. Um, this crab, having been just attacked, is going to now swing at Borth. Protection. And poses disadvantage, right? Yep. It still hits. <clears throat> and... Uh, Oh, not his lucky day. Borth is down. You see the crab just take a swing at the side of his head, and it catches him right on the jaw, and he spins around briefly as he falls to the ground. Uh, Drew, you're up. All right. All right. I'm going to move up to... Oh, that's the wrong thing. I am going to move up to here. And because my Great Axe has reach, I do believe I can hit this one, correct? Yep. Alright. I am going to go ahead and take a... Actually, hold on, that was 25. I'm going to move up one more, which is my max movement, and attack this one. Alright. Um, I guess, I mean, he's laying on the ground. Right? Sure. Okay. Does anyone see any issue with that? Am I doing that wrong? No, he could technically stand on him if he wanted to. Yep. Oh, could he? I, I didn't yeah. know they could. Okay. Once they're down, they're essentially a floor piece. You're like straddling them. Okay, cool. Cool. Right. All right. And I shall roll a 13. And that misses. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> you see him. Looks like a very good swing, but it just bounces off the back of the shell. Um, next, um, Heidi, you see the dwarf on the ship begin recasting the thing you saw her cast before, uh, some gestures with her hand and casting and you see, uh, fire erupt from the face of the crab creature and it makes uh, clicking noises, is it? Uh, screaming in pain. Jarkle is going to... You see the half-orc begin to move defensively over to... Mrs. You see her chuck some flame from her hand at the crab, and it just lands in the sand right next to it. And... Back to Freya. Well, if it doesn't work again, then... Try one more time, and see <laughs> if, if it works this time. Pop out. <laughs> Shoot. And see if it hits. Right, which one are you shooting? Nope. Uh, doesn't matter. And <laughs> pop back in and turn it on. <laughs> All right. You see Freya trying her darndest. And <laughs> uh, and then that one's Okay. And Duncan, you're up. Uh, 
So I am just going to, uh the bottom of the two crab people, is he taking any damage? Um No. Just the top one. Okay. I will cast Firebolt at the one on the bottom. Okay. Make your attack roll. Huh. <laughs> Throw a fireball. Okay. It's pretty wide. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys. Coming? I'm still recovering down here. <laughs> That's anything it. else, Duncan? Okay. All right, and then the uh, crabs. The two remaining, or the first of the two remaining crabs, realizes that this is not going to go well for it. So the this one is going to try to move down here. I'll say for expediency's sake, because uh, Kaltar, make a attack roll. You miss. Miss. The crab escapes out into the sea. Uh. And I couldn't have hit him, right? Even with reach. Uh, no, I don't think so. Right? That's more than technically, because it would be one over. That's it. weird. I mean, it's it's five feet, corner to corner. Yeah. Right. So that he would be able to hit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Dude, I'll Make an attack roll, just to see. And that's. <laughs> Thirteen again, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Um, and then, do, 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 Borth is down. Other crab is going to try to escape down that way, which is uh, you've already used Drew's your reaction this turn, so you can't make another attack. Oh, uh, technically, I couldn't have either then, because I used protection, so I couldn't uh, have attack anyway. Yeah, that was your right. Yep. He <laughs> could disengage. Either way. Oh, see, why am I not going to remember that? He disengaged and run away. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, and at this moment, you realize there are no more scary fish and or crab people. Is, uh... Boris and the guy next to him, I can't see him name. They're both, like, dead, right? They're not, like, unconscious. Um, they are actually unconscious. Can, uh, can I use my thing like that? Can I use... Before you do that. Okay. Um, because Heidi was waiting for this to end, she, um, is going to, or the dwarf woman on the ship is going to cast, uh, Cure Wounds on, is going to run over the flank, over to here, and is going to cast Cure Wounds on both of them, actually. Ah, okay. At that moment, you guys see come to the head of a ship a, uh, uh, I forgot it again. What's it called in D&D? Tabaxi. Uh, tabaxi. Not Kajit. Tabaxi. Um, you see a Tabaxi woman and a long coat. Does she have wares? Does she what? Did she have wares? I, what are you saying, sorry? Wares. Does she have Cause wares? Because she has well, wares. Because she has wares for you to see. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that flew over my head. <laughs> no, Kajit has boat to take to sea. Anyways, you see the what's, Kajit. What's the island doing? <laughs> Come over and she's like, My, my. I can't believe, uh, uh, I think we might want to get out of here. Uh, anyone, uh, can you guys help get, uh, yells out to Heidi and to Delia. Heidi, Delia, uh, help Kajori and Borth get on the boat. And, um, let's see, you, you who have helped my crew, uh, uh, would you like a ride? <laughs> Are you trying to get out of here? Uh, what is the island doing during all this? The island. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. How far up is the is that stern met uh, the uh, whatever prow? 
thing. Uh, uh, I'd say that's 10, 15 feet off the ground. Alrighty. She's just gonna... 15, she, probably. <laughs> Fari, uh, uh, Farira is not... Faria isn't even... She's just running up and hopping up on the boat and shouting, Permission to come aboard! <laughs> Nobody stops you. <laughs> <laughs> not going to wait. <laughs> that is an invitation if I ever had one, eh? Yes. Um, Alright, uh, what else are you guys doing? Oh, who was 19. making the perception check? Duncan? I did. Okay. Um, you see, after this time, um, a couple of... Um, you see uh, a couple of shark fins. Hold on. Oh, I never added these. I mean, I told you this was up here, but I never made it for you guys to see. But up on the bridge, um, you see a couple of uh, shark fins swimming around the water and a couple of corpses dragon turtles floating in the water, though some people have made it to the other side. <clears throat> and you also see that there is now those uh, Sabagin is climbing up the remnants of the bridge that have... Uh, oh, yeah. How did I do that? Hold on. Sorry. There we go. The bridge collapsed quite a while ago, and the... Uh, uh, Sawagin is now climbing up the remnants of the bridge onto the uh, land here. As the sharks follow around in the... or swimming around in the ocean. Or the channel between. Um, and then... Uh, you also notice that the island is sinking at a rate of 5 to 10 feet per couple minutes. Um, it looks like within, uh, no, not 5 to 10 feet, a foot every uh, 5 to 10 minutes. And it looks like if this continued, the island would be completely underwater in within an hour. Oh. What about Mauritius. the two that we left down at the bottom? Are they cut and the three? Oh, the uh, they are all. They have all come up to you now that they see it's safe and uh, seem to just be waiting to see what everyone says. Does anyone else want to say? Oh, you also notice on the other side of the shore, um, the houses are half sub half submerged in water now. The houses that are on the west shore. I would like to do something. Okay. <clears throat> may I take the dead crab and drag it onto the ship? You absolutely may. All right. We got food, guys. All right. Anyone else? I just, uh, I guess we all start making our, I make my way to the boat. Okay. Is it, does everyone follow? Yeah. Okay. I already died once today. I don't need to die again. Feeling obligated to protect Duncan. <laughs> All right. Um, so you guys slowly make your way onto the ship, and uh, the uh, crew begin to uh, move ropes around, and the sails come down, and the ship comes about, and you guys start making your way away from Palmaflora. As it moves behind you in the distance, you can still hear the screaming of people, the vague clicking of the strange sea-like creatures coming out of the ocean. Um, much of the uh, trees are now knocked over across the island, and uh, it certainly looks like it is maybe about to sink if it continues. Um, you continue to pull away. Um, it's about midday at this point, and uh, you all are sitting on the deck. There are actually a few refugees that made it onto the boat, too. Um, oh, yeah, I have it. All right, so we're just going to pretend for now you guys are on the ship. The crew are making their way around doing stuff, and the ship, is, uh, the ship seems available for you guys to walk around and talk with uh, some of the crew if you want to. Would any like to, anyone like to do anything on the ship? I uh, for, want to find out where we're headed. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Faria's going to find a place up near the up near the the let's see front bow of the ship, where she can see where they're going and where she can see the horizon, and she's going to stay there until she stops feeling seasick. 
Freya's at the front of the ship. I'm going to drag this crab to whoever I know the cook to be since I've been riding on this vessel for a time now. Right, and you would know the cook to be Hyvie, right. the uh, dwarf who is... Oh, no, she's the navigator, so the cook is... Is it my love? This half-orc I've been hitting on for a few months now? It isn't, unfortunately. Damn it. I'm going to say the cook is uh, Dilu, the sea elf. All right. I forgot his name, but I'll head over with him. Yep. So you head down into the uh, bottom of the ship. There's a small cooking nook area. Um, uh, he asks, uh, so uh, how are we s splitting this up? Should we just cook it all and set it out for everybody? Is there a way you want him to do it? Um, well, I mean, we can eat what we can eat tonight. Uh, crab meat doesn't stay, at least on a ship, for very long, so this is really just a one-night feast kind of thing. Uh, I assume they'd already have dried goods and stuff, so that would be stuff we could save for the yeah. beginning of this journey, because crab meat's not going to last that long. All right. Well, I, I wouldn't know that, but the cook would know that. Sure. And Dill use. Absolutely, that sounds like a great idea. I'm going to go ahead and cook this up for everybody, and I should let you know in 10 to 20 minutes. Right, Drews, uh, Duncan, either you want to do something? I just want to figure out where we're going. That and was Duncan, as... right? Yes. yes. And Drews, what do you want to do? I will fall in Duncan behind and stop him as he approaches whoever to talk to. And with my heart in my hand, apologize to this young wizard who had trusted me and I abandoned. And to let him know <laughs> that... From this moment on, that I swear to protect him and to make sure that his journey from here on out is not full of woe. You don't have to pledge your life to me, but... There's two ways. <laughs> try not, try <laughs> not to let me die you. again. Sir, I will now follow you until my debt has been paid. You are welcome. Thank you. But uh, just, just try not to let me die again. Uh, it, you came out all right. And I slap him on the back. <laughs> well, well I, I'm glad you have such faith in me, but uh, I, I'm kind of new to this magic thing, so give me some time. Oh, don't worry. You'll get there eventually, like me. And then I walk away proudly, feeling confident that our newfound relationship has been, you know, better. All right. Well, Duncan, after that unique experience, you uh, head downstairs. Um, as you come down, you see uh, Dill, you cooking crab, and uh, I presume you may want to ask him who you can ask about where uh, we're headed. Uh, sure. Yeah, you do so, and Dill, you responds, "I will." No, nope. see you. I will be. <clears throat> The captain is uh, changing and back in her quarters. I think she might not be available for a bit, but you can ask the Jarkle over there, the half-orc. Uh, who I'm anything? flirting with the every Jarkle? chance I get it. The Jarkle. The Jarkle. Something like that. Yeah. So I uh, walk yeah. over to this half-orc um, woman. Woman. And, uh, hi, hi I'm, I'm guessing you're Dejarkal? She looks back at you because she was, uh, leaning over the table, and she looks startled, and is like, Oh, uh, yes, I am. Did we exchange pleasantries already? Uh, uh, no, this, this gentleman over here told me who you were. Oh. Um, I, I was wondering if you could tell us where we're going. I, I do not think the captain has settled on that yet, but, uh... She'll let me know when she's done changing here soon, and uh, hopefully then we'll <laughs> figure out what we're doing. I'm sure she may even want to elicit some input. Um, um, have, have you ever seen anything like that happen before? <sighs> I <laughs> do not think so. That That is the craziest, that is by far the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, oh. That I'm, I'm sure by now that island is 
under the ocean, and all those people are dead. And I really, I'm, I, I know I don't seem really upset right now, but I think it just hasn't hasn't hit me yet. <clears throat> I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not from uh, out this way, so I, I didn't know if that was like a common thing or if, if. Uh... Well, I know. I, I believe we had heard that they were having some kind of conflict between the shark hunters and those those fish people, but uh, I'm not aware of any of the specifics. The captain might know more. Oh well, I'll just I'll wait here for. It's a him or a her? The captain. Her. I, I'll just wait here for her and uh, and. I'll ask her, I guess. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, so, Where am I in all of this down here? Um, is that uh, Kalatar? Kalatar, yeah. Um, if you've, I mean, it's up to you. Where did you go after you gave the crab to Dilia? Well, flirt with the jarkle. That's okay. all I want to do. So you probably, you probably would have uh, overheard that conversation, and now you <laughs> are you just. Passively flirting, or did you want to say anything to her specifically? I mean, sure, but I'm far more charismatic than Kalatar is, so what I'm going to say is going to be like, oh, dang, but what Kalatar is going to say is going to be like, you fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, if you if you want to attempt to flirt with her, um, you can make a... Um, what, what would flirting be? As far as charisma, I don't know, persuasion, persuasion, persuasion. persuasion. <laughs> right. I was gonna say, I mean, are you trying to hide anything about yourself or anything? Or no, just, just... no, I'm not trying to be deceptive. I'm just okay. flirting, flirting yeah. with her. Performance. It would probably be performance. Ooh, right? yeah. it's same, same role. So same for him. Yeah. All right. Flat charisma would be the same for me. I don't. Sure. I mean, I've got a little deception and intimidation, but okay. I don't think I want to use those here. <laughs> well, she she listens. You guys banter back and forth. She seems. Like she's enjoying the conversation well enough, but she's not fully invested in it. It's been the story of my whole trip. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? All right. Um, <clears throat> it is at this time that the uh, captain steps out of her chambers and sees the three of you sitting there. Ah! Or... Ah, my my uh, my friends. I hope I have not kept you waiting long. Uh, looks I... to you, um, uh, looks to Kalatar and Dejarkal sitting next to each other, and is like, "Hmm." I will also walk into the room from the smell of the fish cooking. Okay, yeah. So that's under part of the ship. Go on, Kalatar. That was it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, hi, and uh, hi, looks. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No. Um, is there uh, anything you guys needed help with, or um... I watched this string bean almost die today. <laughs> looks to. Uh, I yeah, guess point you mean Duncan with my thumb. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Uh... All I saw was some an impressive, impressive uh, magical energies. I didn't see him take a hit, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if I had uh, had some some better fighters with me, I I don't think oh, I'd have that problem. <laughs> it's and I slap him on the back again. <laughs> Do you want to eat tonight? Cause uh, brought home dinner. Ah, oh, smells delicious. At that moment, you hear Daly yell, five minutes." Ah. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna walk towards the captain, kind of with my hand extended, like ah, like for a handshake, like hi, ca hi, captain. I I was just wondering if you could tell us where we're going. Do you looks at the hand, or I mean, uh, cap the captain looks at your hand, looks back at you, smirks, and I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, I just wondered if you could tell us where we're going. Well, uh, I was hoping to get everyone together, and maybe we can uh, figure this out together, shall we? And at that point, she starts walking up to the uh, above deck. And do you guys follow? I do. And she calls back behind her, Come along, Dilio, this will... Uh, come along, Dilio, this will only take a minute. And Dilio comes up as well, the sea elf. So everyone is now on the top of the deck. She is standing in the middle with you all in a loosely formed circle around her. 
<sighs> now, I know that most of us probably have never seen anything like that before, but um, I hope <laughs> that uh, even though we have a lot of new faces on board, that we can all get along and make our way to one of the nearby ports to fix ourselves up and uh, maybe discuss some business, if some of you might be interested. <laughs> She looks around, trying to gauge your guys' uh, reactions. Does anyone say anything? I kind of nod my head like I'm just listening intently. Hoping. Kind of distracted, looking at Dejarkle. Duncan, I'm with you. All right. And uh, after saying everyone seems amenable, uh, she points out... Uh, all right, everyone. So then, we have three options from what uh, Heidi has told me. Um, we can go to the Bisoft Isles. It is a tiny island uh, with a small port. Um, there's s s a couple people living there, but not too many. Uh, there is also uh, Broken Bank, uh, a village with a... Uh, it is just a little bit larger of a village, and that, or we could go to Port de Mali, where uh, is one of the larger cities along the coast, and uh, might have more of the stuff we need. But I know not everyone wants to go to where the Concord uh, is the most uh, present. She looks around again, looking to gauge any weird looks or anything on her mention of the Concord as a as a negative. I pull Duncan aside and mention that he, er, ask him how comfortable he is with large areas, uh, considering where I found him. I, I, I don't see any problem. I think the big city might be, might be a better place to blend in. Very well. I have your back. I, I, you don't have to do that, man. It's I mean, true. Thank you, but... I've already told you. What's a Concord? Oh, uh, the Concord, sorry, uh, the Concord is the, uh, uh, government of the Menagerie Coast. Uh, they, uh, enforce shipping lanes and try to be a hassle to, uh, uh, independent merchants. All right, out of character one more time, can you say it again? Because I was writing it and you got ahead of me. Um, it's the government... The gov Government of most of the Menagerie Coast, they are like a, essentially a group of upper tier merchants that uh, uh, formed a government together a long time ago, and now they just try to. They're very trade focused. They maintain shipping lanes, and like that's what their think, military is based around. Think, is, think Holland in the 16th century. It's in the book if you want to read yep. through it. They're basically a trade conglomeration on the western coast. No, just trying to continent. take notes for the character. No, nothing. Oh, okay. um, did anyone else have anything to say? So far, we seem to have a couple of votes for Port, Port de Mali. Uh, I'm going to vote for, for Port de Mali. I'll second that. Wherever it is, as long as it is on land, I am happy. Uh, you see the captain look at her crew. You see the sea elf in particular looks the most uncomfortable, but the rest of them shrug, mostly indifferent. <clears throat> and uh, then she specifically, um, who? Hold on. No, that was probably the cleric. <laughs> What's that? Does anyone have decent passive perception? Oh, uh, hold on. Nope. <laughs> yeah. What's decent? Yeah. 17 passive perception, 20 okay. passive investigation. Okay. Uh, you, who is that, sorry? Uh, Faria. Faria. Uh, you notice, uh, as she looks over at Heidi, that she seems to be asking with her eyes if they have, essentially if they have the means to do this, and Heidi nods back that they do. Um, and uh, Which one is Heidi? The, uh, the dwarf. And uh, at that point, the captain slaps her hands together and is like, So be it. We are heading a uh, mixel for Porto Mali. And, uh, would, you, would you rather put sail somewhere else? 
it it doesn't make uh, i will use the opportunity and the uh company we have cuz Puerto Mali is probably the best place to bring these refugees as well, as long as well as any of you who you know may want to get off there, uh, onto the mainland. Uh, so yep, Puerto Mali it is, and uh, that's where we're going to pick this up next time. Awesome, nice. Again, thank same you time next week. A fun first session. Very fun. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Yeah. This is definitely my first session ever, and I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I might have, missed, court. might have missed five times in a row, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, wait till you... We had a couple good hits. Look, at, good. Couple All good right? hits. Oh, look yeah. at the bright side. At least you didn't have plus seven to hit. <laughs> and still <laughs> missed three times in a row. And still <laughs> missed three times in a row. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. I'll see you next Wednesday. See you guys later. Have a good week. Peace. You too.